Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the third video in a little series I've made about Danny Sound's DIY Eurorack modules. This time I'm taking a closer look at Dynamics, which is a compressor, expander, EQ and exciter with a few extra features. I've got a pair of them set up here along with the VU meters module that sits in between them. I need to say a big thanks to Thonk for sending me these kits after they saw my previous videos, which cover the oscillators, wave folder, filter, VCA and envelope in the Danny Sound range. If you're interested in those modules, then do go back and check out those videos. I've put the links in the description. I should probably also say that Thonk and Danny Sound haven't told me what to say in any of these videos, the opinions are all my own. So I'm going to talk briefly about the build process, but as usual I've put a timing index below if you want to skip straight to the demo patches. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me to grow the channel. And in the meantime, here's a quick preview of what's coming up. So, just like the other Danny Sound modules, Dynamics is a DIY kit, and it's a reasonably chunky one. There are three PCBs, but they're really well laid out, all the components are through holes, so there's no fiddly surface mount soldering to worry about, and you don't need any special equipment. The build guides for all the Danny Sound modules are really good, I've built nine of their modules now without a single issue, and I'd consider myself an intermediate DIYer at best, so if you've got some soldering experience and you've built a module before, you shouldn't have any trouble. It took me about three hours to build each of the Dynamics modules, and I'd recommend doing them in a couple of settings if you can. Here's a quick summary of what the process involves. First, unpack the components and lay things out in groups so you've got everything to hand. The only tools you really need are a decent soldering iron and wire cutters. Starting with the outer board, fit all the resistors and diodes. I solder these from the top, then I flip the board, trim the legs and touch up from that side as needed. Then it's time to move on to the IC sockets and capacitors. Then you can tackle the transistors and the pin headers and fit the ICs in the sockets. That's the outer board done. Onto the middle board, again start with the resistors and diodes. Then again move on to the IC sockets and capacitors. Then finish with the transistors and headers and fit the ICs in their sockets. Finally tackle the POTS board to the resistors and capacitors to start with. Then you can move on to the inductors which are for the EQ circuit, the transistor and the headers. Then get all the switches, pots, jacks and LEDs in position, but don't solder anything yet. Follow the steps in the guide carefully to complete the panel assembly and fit the knobs. There you have it, a completed module. Okay, so to get started I'm just going to do a quick overview of the features of the unit, talk about the signal path, and then I'll do a couple of audio demos to show what the various sections of the unit do to the sound. Signal path starts here at the input on the bottom left, it comes in here, there's an input gain control which is basically a unity gain when it's fully clockwise, and will trim any hot signals if you turn it down. Just to point out, this only really works at modular level signals, so if you wanted to use a line level signal from outside a Eurorack system you need to bring it up to modular level first. Um, signal then goes through this amplifier drive circuit, which once you go above 12 o'clock starts adding soft clipping distortion for nice overdrive effects. Then it's really into the meat of the unit, which is this single all-in-one compressor expander VCA based circuit. Talk a little bit more about how that works when I've got some audio running through it. Um, Next it goes through this mix control here which lets you blend between the processed and dry signal. Really handy for parallel compression so you can have a really heavily processed signal on one side and blend it in with the original signal. Um, then it goes through the sub bass enhancer here which um, adds sub bass harmonics and there's a boost control to add even more. Uh, then it goes to the compressor expander output but that is normal to the EQ input, so it effectively runs straight into the EQ circuit, which is a three-band EQ plus an exciter, which adds kind of distortion at high frequencies, and you can select the bandwidth of that exciter circuit with a switch here. Then it comes out of the main output. 
It's really flexible having this separate input for the EQ section because it means you can either run it as two completely separate units. You could EQ a kick drum and compress a melody, for example, or you could choose to run it as a single channel but run it through the EQ first and then take that into the input of the compressor expander and then come out of there. So you can flip the order around with a bit of patching. Um, there's also input for the sidechain for the compressor. Um, there's envelope in and out, which I'll explain when I talk about how that works in a, in a minute. Now, I've obviously got two of the units set up here, and these are connected internally to the VU meters module in the middle here. This is basically just two backlit VU meters, which obviously look extremely cool, and you can use them to monitor the input or the amount of compression or expansion for either of those units. And there's a separate input here if you just want to use it to monitor a signal level. So I've got a breakbeat just looping, which I'm going to play into the input here, all pretty much dry at the moment. And I'll just let you hear the effect of the amplifier dry first of all. Let's turn that up. That's a nice bit of kind of crunchy distortion. Let's leave that about there. And the sub bass. You'll maybe need headphones or decent speakers to hear that, but that's adding a nice little low end rumble. Add an, Hitting the boost button here, adds even more, really fattens out that break. Let's just kind of keep that boost off, but I'll maybe keep that around one o'clock just for a little bit of low end. And before I come onto the compressor, let's just have a quick listen to the EQ, which it's running through. Here's the treble. These are three fixed bands, treble. Quite nice and musical at the high end. The mid range is quite, quite noticeable there in the middle. Pulls out quite a lot there as you cut that as well. And then the, the bass. Now because of the sub bass circuit as well, this bass doesn't doesn't feel quite as low to me as some other bass EQs might do, but it works really well in conjunction with the sub bass. And then finally you've got this exciter, which will add a bit of distortion to the kind of hi-hats and the snare frequencies. Really kind of adds a bit of fizz. And there's a bandwidth control so you can take it to just the higher frequencies. You can hear that's really just affecting those high hi-hats. If I switch back, it's catching more of that snare as well. Okay, so the compressor expander circuit. Now this is a little bit different to a conventional compressor that has a separate threshold, ratio, and makeup gain control. This is a VCA design which takes the sidechain, which is basically the, the input signal, or you can override it at the sidechain input, and it uses the attack and release controls here to generate a kind of envelope from that signal. And then using the compressor expander control, you can either reduce the gain in the VCA or add gain to the VCA, and you've got this kind of initial amount of gain with the initial level. Now the way this works, let's just hear it. If I add a bit of compression, You can hear that's kind of clipping the, the transients. Let's bring the initial gain up as well. If I just max the compression and max the initial gain, you'll get the most obvious result. This meters, that's the amount of compression. You can see as it swings to the left on those main transients, it's really slamming the level down, which has the overall effect of making the stuff in between the kicks and snares much louder. Now, if I mix back to the dry signal, Listen carefully to what's in between the beats as I mix back to the compressed signal. All that kind of room ambience and hi-hats in between the kicks and the snares is now much more in the foreground. The faster the attack, the more it's gonna kind of clamp down straight away to the point where it's just slamming it into submission. If I bring that attack up, you'll, it'll let more of those initial transients through. It's quite musical around 12 o'clock usually. And the release likewise, the quicker that releases, you can see it's not compressing that much now because as soon as it compresses, it's banging back up again. But the longer release times will kind of give it that more classic, heavily compressed sound. Again, at 12 o'clock, it's quite musical. Let's bring that back slightly. Just mix back to the dry. And of course you can, with the mix control, have this nice New York style parallel compression where you blend between the two. That's quite a nice kind of mix there where I've got a little bit of that energy brought up in between the beats, but still with the dynamics of the original signal being allowed to come through. Again, let's bring the sub bass up, add a bit of fizz. There we go. 
go. Now I'm going to switch the break beat and show you the expander circuit. Okay, so here's another break, and I've kind of reset things. Let's listen to what the expander does. So if I reduce this initial level, so there's actually no gain, and then turn the expansion up. This is going to use the envelope that it's deriving from the input signal to open that VCA effectively. And now again, if I adjust the attack and release, fast attack means it's going to slam in straight away. Longer release will let more of the signal through because it'll take a while to recover after that transient hits it. But if I reduce that release, we're basically effectively cutting out everything that's quiet in that signal. So all the hi-hats, all, all the room ambience in between, just giving us this kind of kick and snare pattern now. Quite, cre quite a nice creative effect. Again, I'll just blend back to the original. You can hear all that stuff in between the drums. It's now away. Now another cool thing we can do with this envelope, that the envelope follower, is take this envelope output. And I can use that to open a filter. Let's just run a square wave from this oscillator through a filter. And have a listen to that. So I've now got this envelope basically opening this filter on the synth. And again, by playing with the release, I can kind of make that a longer. So it's a really handy envelope follower circuit that you can do some interesting creative things with. So because the compressor expander circuit in Dynamics is essentially just a VCA with an envelope follower and there's an external envelope input for it, we could just use it like a conventional synth voice VCA. To demo this, I've got a sequence coming from the Mosqua in my palette case. I've got the Volt Proactive going into the EN129 oscillator. I've got the square wave output of that going through the multimode ladder filter, and I'll take that into the input of Dynamics. Uh, I've also got the gate of the sequencer triggering this um, ADSR envelope. And I've got two copies of that, one of which I'm going to take to the envelope input of Dynamics. The other one's going into the filter just for a bit of uh, tone shaping there as well. And to make it work like a conventional VCA, you just turn the expander all the way up and you turn the initial level all the way down. And that means that as an envelope signal is received, it will open up that VCA and add gain to, that, um, to the signal passing through. I've got the EQ flat, I've got the amplifier drive pretty neutral. So um, a kind of clean sequence will sound like this. Just tune that down a little bit. But of course, we've now got access to all the other color and tone shaping controls of the Dynamics, which you wouldn't really get in any other VCA. So let's boost the drive a little bit. That's a nice bit of bite. The sub bass as well. on this sound. But then you've got the EQ, which can get pretty extreme. So we've got this whole palette of sounds here. synth VCA. It's really handy if you're into more aggressive sounds. So as well as using Dynamics as a kind of analog synth voice VCA with loads of character, you can also just use it as a end of chain Dynamics processor for a digital voice just to kind of warm things up and add a bit of character. 
Um, I've got here another Moskva sequence, which is just playing uh, a digital voice. In this case, it's the Plum Audio Roved, which is based on Mutable Instruments Platts. Just a really simple, here's a completely dry digital sequence played out of that. I've got a little bit of per step modulation happening from R&D step. To sample and hold voltages going into these three parameters. So it's quite a nice lively patch, but there's not sonically, it sounds quite digital, sounds quite clean. Sometimes what you want, but if you want to warm things up a bit, let's take that through dynamics. And everything's kind of flat at the moment. I've got it fully wet, but nothing's actually happening. If we bring up the drive, it kind of starts to fatten it already. And that'll start to really hang up, grip onto those kind of brighter notes and give a little bit of bite to them. Sub bass might not have too much effect on this voice. It does add a little bit of low end warmth though, especially with the, with the boost in. You'll probably need headphones to hear that. And again with the EQ we can start to really Soften the EQ slightly. Let's start to compress it a bit as well. Yeah, that's really rounded off some of that spiky dynamics. It's kind of smoothed the dynamic range quite heavily. if I flip back to the dry. All the space in between these note attacks now is kind of much fuller. And again, you could use the mix to use a bit of best of both worlds. Though it's quite subtle, but you can kind of use it to bring these digital sounds into a slightly warmer place. Okay, for this patch I'm going to use both Dynamics units to do a bit of dark techno kick drum and sidechain rumble. Uh, the left hand Dynamics I'm going to use just to process a simple kick drum sound and kind of beef it up a bit. And the right hand one I'm going to use to sidechain duck a kind of big effects reverb path for the kind of rumble effect which will kind of sit in between the kick drums. Um, the kick drum I'm going to use is just a really basic, simple analog kick from a Korg Volker Beats, which dry sounds like this. I'm just running it into the modular through the Making Sound Machines Towson DB preamp. Not adding any distortion there, just going to bring it in clean to the dynamics. This is it fully dry. And as I pan the mix over to wet, I've compressed it a bit and I've got the amplifier drive turned up. I've got a little bit of sub bass. Just going to add a little bit of high end bite to it as well. Obviously, it's quite distorted. It's got that distorted tail, which the compression is going to bring up. Just gonna, that's the dry sound again. I think a nice blend between the two will work. So let's set that to about, just set it to 12 o'clock, have a nice 50-50 mix. Now I've got uh, a copy of that output. One of them is going to the side chain of the second dynamics and another one is going via this AI synthesis stomp box adapter into a zoom effects unit where I've got a, a kind of shimmer reverb, which sounds fully wet on the effect but dry through dynamics. It sounds like this. So it's just this kind of lo-fi reverb noise that's kind of generated from that kick. Now, if I bring in the compression with that mix control, you can hear it kind of ducking where the kick will sit. I'll just bring the kick in for a second. Let's get the kick out for a minute while I tweak this slightly. Now to get this a bit more rumbly, I'm just going to use the EQ to take the treble and mid right down. And let's get that sub bass boost. And again with headphones you'll really hear this. That's it without the compression. Get a bit of drive on it as well. Add a bit more bass there. I 
going to take all that mid right out. I'm going to add a little bit of that excited just for a little bit of kind of hissy top end. Let's bring the compressed version of that back in and let's bring the kick back in. And of course you can play with the release and attack time on the compression of the of the rumble. Get it a bit more rhythmic. And you can bleed through a bit of it so it's not quite so heavily squashed. But there you go, I think we'll then balance those levels a little bit. Got a pretty solid kind of Berlin techno kick drum foundation right there. All from a relatively nondescript kick drum to start off with. So here I've got um, some 808 modules from Tip Top in my palette case and I'm just gonna sequence them from the Beatstep Pro. This is the dry drum sound. Just a standard kind of quite simple 808 pattern. Let's just have a little play with the compressor controls and hear how that sounds on the beats. Start to really slam it with these. Let's keep the attack around there. Let's give it a bit of drive as well. And let's try a bit of sub bass too, why not? Let's make that kick drum really slam. Let's just try making those hi hats fizz even more with the exciter. some pretty aggressive mid-range sounds with that mid EQ. Just roll off a little bit of that high end. Now of course with the mix control that's quite an extreme sound we can blend back some of the original. Let's just go all the way back. This is the dry sound again. Just bring in some of that much more slammed sound in parallel. Can you hear those kind of hi-hats in between the beats really kind of jumping out now? It's got that almost kind of overdriven tape sort of sound. So I'm going to follow on from that 808 drum pa patch and use the second dynamics to do some side chaining of a chord. I'm just going to get that playing via one of the sequencer channels on the Beatstep Pro uh, and patch that into here. I'm just going to mute the drums for a moment and get this playing. So this is the Plum Audio Rovered in chord mode. Let's just bring in some other notes of the chord. And let's just invert and transpose that a little bit. So there's nothing triggering an envelope it's just continually playing, it's just the Volper Octave input. But let's take the kick drum from our drum pattern, which I can just take a copy off from the module, put that into the side chain, and start compressing that. If we bring the drums back in. Playing with the attack and release, we can kind of let's change that rhythm slightly. It's just going to duck out of the way of the kick drum. Let's drive that a little bit as well. There's one more thing we can try, which is to take the envelope out. So this is kind of the envelope follower in the module that's creating an envelope, which is docking that VCA. Let's take that into the control voltage input of a filter and let's take the output of dynamics into the filter. Just keep it low pass. Now as this plays. So as well as 
changing the level, we're also changing the filtering slightly. It's much more obvious with the resonance up a bit. That's it for this video. Hope you found this useful and I hope you've got a little flavor of what the Dynamics module can do. It's a really useful addition to any URX setup, I think, especially if you've got a few other sound sources that you want to add a bit of character to. Thanks again for watching and if you've enjoyed, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.